In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some personal information about my health, which has been happening now for the past couple of years. Don't get me wrong, I was in two minds whether or not to put this out onto the socials, but we've decided to do it because we do think that it will help others watching. Let's get into the video. Morning. So today I'm flying out to Istanbul for a health check. I'm whispering because Kush is still asleep uh, and the walls are super thin. But I'm going there for uh, for some personal reasons. It's, it's not for my teeth or for my hair just yet. Uh, but I'll explain everything once I land. Made it guys, got into Turkey last night around 11 o'clock, so it was a bit of a late one and up early this morning to be taken to the hospital um, for the first day of three. So I'm here for three days in total for a full MOT health check. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because about 18 months ago, uh, I got diagnosed with uh, essential thrombocythemia, which is basically a uh, blood disease um, that was just found from a routine blood test and basically I was just very fatigued, I was falling asleep all the time, even if I'd had a lie-in or really early nights, just trying to like combat and trying to help myself recover from you know working late nights. That's all I thought it was, just general tiredness. And then I started developing like a bit of pins and needles down my arm into the thumb. And apparently that's to do with the buildup of the platelets that are multiplying at um, not a very nice rate. So from that bit of a scare, I decided from that point that it was important to look after health. And I know that sounds silly, but I've always been one to just kind of neglect it. If there's something wrong, I didn't want to go to the doctors. Whereas Kush um, is always kind of like the other side. She, she's always pushing and obviously um, not made me do this, but definitely been an influencing factor to, to look after health as number one. Obviously no health, no business. Um, but I feel like it's something that we don't do a lot of in England because they do get MOT checks in other countries and we don't seem to do that here. I looked into it to going in, obviously through the NHS first, but I was told that it could be up to 12 months wait time. Um, and then I looked into going privately in the UK and it was very extortionate pricing. So it was actually cheap for me to fly out to Turkey to go and do all the tests that I'm going to be doing, which I will give like a full list of things that I'm going to be checked for. Um, much cheaper to do it here essentially to get all the flights, all the hotel and the obviously the, the health checkup as well which was just much cheaper. So today is the first day of three which I'm going to be going to do some tests. Um, as an overview it will I'll be getting tested for uh, well speaking to cardiologists, neurologists, I'm getting MRI scans, I'm going to be getting ultrasounds, checking my lungs, um, pretty much anything that you can think of my intestines, all the colons getting tested out so that's going to be fun. Um, I've heard that's not very nice. If you've ever had that before, never had that before in, in, in my experience. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of jump on and give you an update on, on why we're doing this. And obviously, if you do have any um, silly symptoms that you're ignoring, like I was, then obviously do go and get checked. Mine was just a basic routine blood test. I ended up finding out what I'd got. And now I'm on medication to obviously help with that. And obviously today's these, these next three days are, are a big step in looking after my health and hopefully not finding anything else, but at the same time, at least we can monitor it um, and all, all being well, it'll just be an annual check that I'll be going for. Obviously, I, as, the, as this, this little vlog progresses, I'll be giving more and more information on exactly what tests and all the pricing and the structure for this test as well, if you are interested in doing something like this. Um, if, if you're having problems in England with wait times and obviously private pricing, it, it can get quite high. So it might be an option for you to do this as well. So I'll try and video as much as possible on this first day. I'll see you soon. That's good. My colonoscopy is booked in for 11 o'clock in the morning and I'm about to show you my routine that I have to start now to flush out the system, to put it politely. And to do that, they've given me these Dulcolax tablets. I've got to take six of these now. 
And then half an hour later, I've got to take these Metpamide 10 milligram tablets. And then on the hour, every hour are these drinkable solutions. I've got to drink these within 20 minutes. And then every hour, obviously just work my way through them. And I'm not allowed anything to drink other than water. And in terms of food wise, soup is the only thing I can eat. And then after midnight, um, basically not allowed to eat or drink water after midnight. And then obviously got to fast completely until um, 11 o'clock tomorrow for the colonoscopy. So it's gonna be a long one. I'm not gonna film it. Just wish me luck. So I'm two bottles in. Got to drink five litres of water. So that's uh, going quite well through them. And to be honest, they don't even taste that bad. Cheers. Morning. So last night was adventurous, uh, but it wasn't a particularly difficult task to do. Essentially just to drink those solutions um, and just be indoors next to a bathroom. It's not really that difficult to do guys. So if you ever have this procedure, don't be too worried. Um, just put Netflix on and just relax. Um, but yeah, anyway, moving on, it's today. Today's the big day. So I'm gonna have the colonoscopy and the endoscopy. So colonoscopy goes up that way, endoscopy goes down the mouth. So I think it's two separate cameras that we'll use, hopefully. Um, and they'll basically just be checking my esophagus and my stomach and then obviously the intestines and everything like that. So fingers crossed everything goes to plan. I will be um, sedated, so I'll be put, put to sleep. Um, and I think the procedure's maybe 30 to 45 minutes, so it's not even that long. So I will keep you updated on the day as we progress through. But as an update so far, so today is technically day two of this whole kind of medical checkup. And I want to give you an, a run through of what happened on day one. So that was yesterday, completed the, like a full range of tests. And I have I did that many that I've had to write them down because I actually forgot. Uh, so I've written down on the back of my hotel receipt, just to give you an update on what this whole package includes. And there are extras that I did purchase, but I'll give you like the basic overview of what I was given as part of this. So as soon as I arrived to the to the clinic, I was obviously had my blood test taken, um, I had my blood pressure done, and I had an ECG, so um, electrocardiogram, basically checking all the heart functioning, etc. So that was like the first basic test that, you, that you're going to get. Then we moved on to a urine test. So there's two types of urine tests, and in fact, just one second, I'll show you what I got. Ten seconds later, well, I was given this um, orange um, tub. And this is like a 24 hour urine test. So um, fill it up with wee for the whole day and then give it to them at the end. And that they apparently can maybe extract some more results. I'm not actually 100% sure. Um, it's probably worth researching what that 24 hour urine test gives you extra. But I also did a short term urine test as well, literally just went to the toilet, um, handed it to them and then they checked things like my, um, my kidneys and my bladder and all how it's functioning. Whilst I was waiting for the results for that, we did an MRI scan to check my brain and neck. I don't get those results back until today, hopefully. Um, and then I had my CT scan, which wasn't, well, that was worse than the MRI scan. So if you ever have an MRI scan, you might've heard that it's quite claustrophobic. So when you go into this like chamber, obviously you're literally like staring up. They put like a, a big brace on your neck so you can't move your head. Um, they then put you in like a fixed position, so you're kind of laying down, and then you're looking up, and there's like a big kind of like chamber around you. The, the walls are pretty close, and there's lots of loud noises, but they do put earmuffs on, so it does help. But I just kind of relaxed and went to sleep. But if you are claustrophobic, then yeah, it, it might not be nice, but um, just just breathe, try to breathe. It's, um, it's quite peaceful and relaxing if you just kind of ignore the noises. Um, so that was the MRI scan. As soon as I'd finished that, I went straight into the CT scan. So the CT scan was um, actually worse than the MRI scan because they put this uh, contrast. So it's like a, a chemical solution that goes in your in your veins, and that kind of like I don't know if it gives like a, a better colouring of the of the lungs and how they're functioning, so they can see it better on the scan. Um, but that wasn't nice because as soon as that goes in, it's, it kind of rushes to your head. You feel a bit like nausea. Feel like you're going to be sick. Um, and then I had like a, a banging headache for like the rest of the day. 
put a couple of paracetamol balls and you should be fine. So, but I didn't have any. Even though I was in the hospital, I was a bit nervous and a bit shy to ask. Um, so I ended up just kind of riding it out. I didn't want it to interfere with anything else either, kind of overthinking like that. Didn't want any like tablets in my body whilst I was getting all these tests. So I just kind of rode it out and then it was fine after like two paracetamol balls. Um, so it was a CT scan. And then I ended up getting the, um, my urine test back from the urologist and everything was fine with like my kidneys and bladder and stuff. So that was, that was great. And then we moved on to the cardiologist examinations. So I did like a treadmill test, um, which I'll put some footage on here. That was basically just running on a treadmill at different speeds, um, getting that heart rate up. And then obviously testing the resting heart rate once recovered. Then they literally just moved me from that room. There was no waiting around straight into the room next door where I had a ultrasound on my heart to check all the functioning. This is now day two. And like I just said at the start, it's the colonoscopy and endoscopy. So I'll keep you updated throughout the day. Two hours later. So I just woke up and didn't really feel anything. Went straight to sleep, couldn't remember falling asleep. And then he just... He just woke me up and I'm getting changed, just feeling a little bit tired. But I think everything went okay. Oh, it's a nice drug. Uh -huh. I'd do it again for that. So I'm just getting changed. Yes, probably the best thing I've seen in 24 hours. Food. Oh, I'm so hungry. <laughs> Made it to day three, I'm still alive, still kicking, still all healthy, um, touch wood, all good, hopefully. Um, so, before I get into day three, which is the final day of the checkups, I want to recap day two. So, obviously, I was heading off to the colonoscopy and endoscopy, but I didn't mention one thing. I was actually having a fertility test in the morning. Now, it's more of a prevention and to make sure that everything's working rather than a treatment. Um, basically, because I'm taking these injections into my abdomen for the blood disorder, um, it's quite a powerful, it's quite a strong medicine, basically. And there's research to suggest that if you're a female, you shouldn't be taking these injections if you're trying to get pregnant. Uh, alternatively, if you're a male, there's information which is, um, in my opinion, not enough that has been done. These doctors do speak good English as well. Most of them have like, you know, really good English skills, um, as you'd expect. But obviously, if there is ever a breakdown in translation, you do have like your dedicated translator with you who speaks Turkish and English. Or if you're a different nationality, they, they do have lots of other translators from other countries. Um, so you, you'll, you'll always be looked after and he will always look after you as well. I don't speak Arabic, but I really want to know what, what they say. It's interesting. Interesting to learn about different cultures. That's the beauty of the world. When you, when you get time to travel around. But yeah, the reason why um, I don't have my mic with me and the doors are really like not great with like noise. I can hear traffic outside, but it kind of relaxes me on a night time. But I'll show you my hotel room. It's a bit messy. Very messy, actually. So here's the tea and coffee station. It's not a particularly like great hotel. We 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 had to sort this out ourselves. So all your flights and um, the hotel is paid for separately. But yeah, there's the hotel room. It's all right, just box standard. Now I'm going on to day three now, which is the results of the fertility test. I'm just in between, kind of like um, in between filming. I've just received a text message from my translator to say that they've got the results and I can go and see the urologist. So like my heart's like a bit like nervous because obviously I want everything to be fine. I'm sure it will be. Um, so I've got to go and, uh, and see that and see him now. So wish me luck guys. I'll, I'll keep you updated as always.
So I'm back in the UK and I do have my test results from Memorial Hospital. They do translate these into English, by the way, which is great. Um, fortunately, all the results that came back, or most of the results that came back, were good news. There was obviously things that we knew that was going to crop up, such as the platelets, which were high. And unfortunately, we still believe and think that the injections are causing the fertility issues, which are, we are now going to look down the IVF route to solve this. It is obviously a very, very personal matter, so do go easy on me. I just wanted to show you this, how important it is to get health checked. Without health, there's no business. And obviously, just look after, that, look after that as number one. In terms of the pricing, it was $2,950 which is approximately £2,300 at the time of recording, and it was the Memorial Hospital in Istanbul. So if this is something that might appeal to you, please do reach out to them, get in touch with them, and, and arrange for your health check. It really is important to look after. And if you did find some value in this video, please do like it. And any questions, write down in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer them below.